A somber anniversary. 365 days since the deadliest attack on the Jewish people since the Holocaust. War still waging on, causing horrific, unnecessary loss and destruction for both Israelis and Palestinians. When will the United States stop funding Israel's ethno-nationalist crusade? Welcome to the No Spin Zone. Graph's Grievances starts right now. Exactly one year ago today, Hamas covertly launching the deadliest attack on Israel in the country's 75-year-old history. The terrorist group murdering 1,200 people in Israel and taking another 250 hostage. The brazen attack, the worst on the Jewish people since the Holocaust, unleashing the now longest war between Israel's and Arabs since 1948. Israel's retaliatory counterattack, one of the most intense bombardments ever recorded in modern warfare, according to the New York Times, has now left more than 40,000 Palestinians dead in Gaza. Israel's overwhelming response also displacing millions of young, poverty-stricken Gazans as their entire homeland was flattened by Israel's defense force under the guise of seeking out Hamas. And I specifically say under the guise of because while I do believe Israel is rightly determined to take out the terrorists who cause their people so much pain and suffering, Israel's mass bombardment and destruction of the Gaza Strip has not only killed thousands of innocent people, but created a massive humanitarian crisis by cutting off much-needed food, water, and fuel to the region. All of this horror notably not freeing the roughly 100 people, including four Americans, still being held by Hamas after being abducted from Israel a year ago. And instead of focusing on negotiating a truce to bring home these hostages, Israel, under the leadership of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, seems intent on expanding his war throughout the Middle East. Days ago, Israel invading Lebanon to go after Hezbollah, which began firing missiles into the Jewish state roughly a year ago in support of Hamas. So Israel is now fight fighting on multiple fronts, threatening the lives of an additional tens of millions of innocent people. If history is any guide, this full-blown regional war attempting to remake the Middle East will not end well. Three years ago, President Joe Biden ending the U.S. war in Afghanistan after nearly 20 years of fighting. This decision about Afghanistan is not just about Afghanistan. It's about ending an era of major military operations to remake other countries. We saw a mission of counterterrorism in Afghanistan, getting the terrorists and stopping attacks, morph into a counterinsurgency, nation building, trying to create a democratic, cohesive, and united Afghanistan, something that has never been done over many centuries of Afghan's history. Moving on from that mindset and those kind of large-scale troop deployments will make us stronger and more effective and safer at home. The message from President Biden extraordinarily clear and wise. We cannot and should not attempt to use military power to remake other countries in our own image. We will always hunt down terrorists who do us harm, but we will not endanger American lives and waste precious resources nation building. Yet that is precisely what America is once again doing with its funding of Israel's current military conflict. The United States has spent a record $17.9 billion on military aid to Israel since the war in Gaza began. That, on top of an additional $4.9 billion that America has spent on stepped-up U.S. military operations in the region. And even before this current war, Israel was the biggest recipient of U.S. military aid in history, getting $251 billion adjusted for inflation since its founding from America. 
And you might think that all of this aid might buy America some influence with Israel. But that is not what has happened. Privately and publicly, President Joe Biden has expressed great frustration with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for his refusal to reduce civilian casualties and stop expanding his war. But because the U.S. has continued to keep weapons flowing to Israel and never imposed any real restrictions on their use, Netanyahu has continued to ignore Biden's calls for restraint. And because Netanyahu has seemingly endless resources to wage war and is facing a reckoning regarding his own culpability for the attack when the war ends, he sees no reason to make peace. This massive policy failure on the part of President Biden happened because despite all of his foresight about Afghanistan and never-ending wars, Biden still wrongly sees Israel as a kindred spirit, democratic state. This very sad reality is that Israel, at least under its current leadership, is an ethno-nationalist state, where only Jewish people are afforded all the rights of citizenship. And this form of apartheid means Netanyahu can never make peace with the Palestinians because he does not see them as equals. And therefore, the only way Israel's war will end is if we, the United States, stop cutting Netanyahu a blank check. Then the Israeli people will have to decide whether to throw out Netanyahu and try and make peace or face a likely terrible end. Which, of course, is extraordinarily painful for me to contemplate because as the grandson of a Holocaust survivor, I want all Jews and all Palestinians to be able to live in peace and prosperity wherever they choose. Thank you for watching Graf's Grievances. Let me know what you think. Please like, subscribe, share, and join me in the next one.